something new concerning the Yellowstone supervolcano. How liquid was found seeping through the surface of active area. Callum Hoare of Express UK reports. The Yellowstone supervolcano scientists discovered boiling oil was seeping out the ground above a thermal area of the supervolcano and it was deform deforming the road. This is according to a geologist explaining what had happened. The Yellowstone caldera gets its nickname as a supervolcano because of the ability to inflict devastation on a worldwide level. And it's located, as we know, in the state of Wyoming and northeast of the state towards Montana, into Montana and Idaho. The supervolcano is constantly monitored by USGS for signs that a super eruption could be on its way. And in April this year, geologists observed a new sign of activity, the new thermal area that appeared on infrared scanners near Turn Lake. This new thermal area described a part of the Yellowstone National Park where ground temperatures drastically spiked and they burned away grass and trees. There was a tree kill there and there was also uh, charcoal trees. That's how hot the ground was. It was boiling actually. The ground was boiling whereas the top of the trees that were facing the atmosphere were not burned. The bottom part of the trees that were lying on the ground were burnt to a charcoal. Now, this is not the first event of its kind. Dr. Henry Hessler is the park geologist and he revealed a similar incident occurred five years ago during a question and answer session on YouTube. He said in 2015, in the summer of 2014, there was a three mile section of road along the Firehole Lake Drive, which is a side road north of Old Faithful that was closed because the pavement had become so soft. The pavement, as we know, is made from asphalt. It had softened because of the underground heat. He said road oil was seeping out through the pavement. Reports were that this was due to increased geothermal activity in the area. People then became concerned that this indicated increased volcanic activity there. But Dr. Hesley explained that it was a number of coinciding events that had caused the melting. He said, yes, the road is in an active geothermal area. It's a side road that allows people to view great fountain geysers, white dome geysers, and other thermal features. As such, the road is on very hot ground. And he goes on to explain when we get a very hot day in the summer with all the sun beating down on the black asphalt and the road had recently been chipped sealed so all the cracks in the road were sealed with oil which not only stopped the rain from getting uh, into the road but also stopped the hot geothermal vapors from escaping through the road through the asphalt. Dr. Hesley went on to explain that a number of factors contributed to the area of the park being closed off he said, so the three things, the very hot air temperature above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the road being in a thermal area, and the asphalt basically being sealed by new road oil that was black, all coupled to deform the road. Within two days, our park maintenance crews had been out and working on the road and fixed it. It was open for travel and has been ever since the original closure. This also happened back in 2002 when a segment of that road near White Dome Geyser approached 196 degrees Fahrenheit. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But there, what occurred there was roughly a 60-foot area being stripped off to allow the road to breathe. Gravel was placed down and that segment of road has been open ever since. You see, it's a changing environment. Uh, you have deformations, you have subsidence, you have rising. The magma chamber is rising in certain areas where you have, for example, the new area, the thermal area, Western Lake. Also, Norris Geyser Basin had seen a rising deformation. And we've had, since last March, the steamboat geyser erupting. 
and it's al already broken those records yesterday, or just a few hours ago. Uh, so it has set a new record for eruptions, and any eruption after that, of course it will be, is yet again another record for Steamboat Geyser. So we, and um, that's unusual. It shows that there has been a change in the body of the magma as to where it's going, where, where it's heating the water that is steamed off in the geysers, and this new thermal area. And also we have a tremendous amount of earthquake swarms northwest of that area, which is in uh, Manhattan, Montana. Also that new area is towards Hebgen Lake, which is just outside of the, the uh, park boundary in uh, the border of Man Montana with Idaho. That's where we had the 7.3 earthquake in the summer of 1959. That caused a tremendous amount of changes in Yellowstone. It even created a new lake called Quake Lake. So we see that uh, Yellowstone is always, always, and lately, I'll show, let's go see together what we've seen today. All right, here we are at Yellowstone Volcano Monitoring. This is Manhattan, Montana. This is a 4.2 magnitude that we had on August 16, and you can see the swarm continuously going there. We've had 150 quakes in this area, actually this screen in the past 28 days, so that's quite a lot. There are mines there. They're basically mining a lot of sapphire stones, and uh, this is Mount Het, Montana, which is northwest of, let's go out a little bit so you can see, the, the blue border here is the border of the Yellowstone National Park. And the orange that you see here is the outline of the caldera, which is just about the original, the top magma chamber is, begins at three miles down. This is Yellowstone Lake. This is another uh, 3.5 that we had August 15th. And this, right next to it, on the border of um, okay, Montana and Idaho is Hebgen Lake, where we had the 7.3 magnitude in 1959. Geologists, in fact, say that a lot of the quake storms that we're having now are very delayed aftershocks from that quake. Or they could be foreshocks or just regular earthquakes coming from other areas that are giving pressure onto Yellowstone. Let's go to see what's happening on the west coast here. Okay, the blue is the past day, the red is the past hour, and this is Los Angeles here. And this is Sultan Buttes right there, that's another volcano. With a geothermal plant right here where the little hand is. And there's another geothermal plant across the border in Mexico as well. Ridgecrest also has a geothermal plant on uh, China Lake at the Air Force Base there. And uh, that's where we had the earthquakes of July 4th and July 5th. The 7.1 of July 5th was a major quake. That seems to have rattled all this area and the geologists did tell us that we were to expect a lot of earthquake activity because that was a major quake and it unsettled everything. And we see that we basically have a lot of activity lately on the Garlic Fault, which is the second largest fault in California. The largest fault is the San Andreas Fault. As you can see here, we have a lot of activity there as well. And this area here is the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. Let's pull out a bit. Now you can see you have a better picture here of what's going on. Okay, and uh, this past week is what we have here on Yellowstone. We did say that we had a 7.1 magnitude in 1999 in Ridgecrest, which gave a quake swarm to Yellowstone a few weeks later. That's why when this quake came at Ridgecrest this year, July 4th and July 5th, we had already read the 
geologist paper that said that the 1999 7.1 quake gave an earth core quick sword to Yellowstone. And we said, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't be surprised if it happens again this time. And it seems that it is happening. But in the meantime, we've also learned that there's a magma body under here, which is stretching under ridge crests. In fact, that diagram came out in the spring of this year, which was way before the ridge crest earthquakes would happen July 4th and 5th. And it had a black dashed circle around this area of Los Angeles and Ridgecrest, meaning that's where the magma plume is very intensely. And it's also, depending on which depth you're at, it's also under the Long Valley supervolcano area and along the west coast and also turning in towards uh, Yellowstone supervolcano. It's the same magma body. Maybe that explains why with the ridge crest that we had 20 years ago, 7.1, a few weeks later, the pressure traveled and started hitting in uh, Yellowstone supervolcano with quake swarms. Now, in the meantime, you have a lot of activity around Portland and Seattle and the New Madrid seismic area as well. Okay, so I'll leave a link below for you for this. All of you who are there, please be very careful. And um, as we said, okay, the geologists tell us that they are not correct, connected. Yellows, uh, Yellowstone is not connected with Ridgecrest, whereas it's connected by the magma chamber, which is the same body, actually. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.